The educator Dr. Maria Montessori once said, The child developing harmoniously and the adult improving himself at his side make a very exciting and attractive picture. Welcome to Montessori Education with me, Jesse McCarthy, where we talk raising children and educating students while bettering ourselves right alongside them. Hi, everyone. We are still here in coronavirus times. I am definitely thankful to be alive and healthy, and I hope all of you out there are doing well yourself. So today I wanted to talk about something that's really important to me, and that's taking time to enjoy growth. Uh, Happily, I have someone pretty profound to help me out on the topic, and that's Maria Montessori. Uh, She's not here in person, of course, uh, although I would absolutely love that. So I'll be reading from a talk she gave over a century ago when she visited San Francisco, and that was back in 1915. So the story she shares is about a child's growth, uh, and also importantly, how those around that child responded. So after I read the excerpt, I'll share a couple of points that I think we can gain from Montessori's words. Okay, uh, here we go. Quote, This fact was observed by an American lady who visited one of our schools in Rome. The children were seated at the table, and they had their hot soup in plates before them. There was a little child who had not yet put his bib up. He was trying to put it on, and he did not succeed. This American lady was very much interested to see how this would turn out. She saw that the teacher did not help the child to put on his bib, and she thought, How could that teacher let the child's soup get cold? Then she thought that perhaps for that child there was something more important than the hot soup, and that was learning to do something. For instance, to do this act of order, it took a certain amount of ability of putting on his bib, and in reality, the child did try and try and try. At last, he succeeded. When the child succeeded, the lady felt a feeling of relief and pleasure, and she was attentively watching the child and the teacher. When she had this feeling of relief, she suddenly heard the cries of joy around her. Then she saw that some of the children had their spoons held in mid-air and were watching with the same interest as she was. But they were looking at this child who had succeeded with a tenderness which was almost maternal. And one might say that these children were really watching the progress trembling while the lady was watching with a cold interest. End of quote. I I love this passage. It is one of those stories that I come back to over and over, year and year again. Uh, It's actually from a compilation called The California Lectures of Maria Montessori, uh, 1915. And I'll share a link on the podcast episode page for anyone who's interested. So what's the moral of the cold soup story? So I think there are a few, uh, but I just want to highlight two. One that Maria Montessori no doubt wanted to get across herself, and another that is my own related point. So the first, Montessori's. I'd say this anecdote, it just vividly shows how children in the right environment can have a deep care for other children, especially here in enjoying and celebrating in their development or growth. On a side note, notice also that none of the children went over to help the boy with his bib as I think they implicitly knew that his figuring that out for himself was more important than, you know, the soup itself in the moment. And, you know, even the American woman seemed to eventually recognize this too. Um, Though, as Montessori notes at the end, she felt that the woman was still watching with, you know, cold interest. And this point of Montessori's is worth pausing on, and it's what I want to first highlight. Many new to Montessori understand the idea that children should be allowed to take their time to accomplish things and without unnecessary aid by adults or even by peers at times. Uh, I mean, it can take work to fully accept and implement this, no doubt, but the idea itself is clear. And as parents and teachers start to really internalize it, they more often allow the child's soup to get cold, you know, so to speak. But as a Montessori principle, This is basically understanding the importance of process in child development versus getting, you know, overly focused on the end product. So here the boy's struggle to put a bib up on his own, that's process, is more important than our ensuring his soup is hot, you know, product. 
So I think most who get involved with Montessori pedagogy or philosophy, they get this point. But what I think sometimes we miss, or at the least we don't emphasize enough, and what Maria Montessori is highlighting here, is that we as adults can fail to experience the deep uh, love of the child's growth itself. So to look at the child's struggle as, you know, in a way, profoundly beautiful, as something that if we interrupt it, we don't only you know, hinder a child's development of independence, but we also, ourselves, we don't get to experience the kind of wonderful shared spiritual feeling that those, you know, those little children had for their peers. So when we step in to do things for the child that he can actually do on his own, and really when we do things for any human being who can and wants to achieve on his or her own, we not only take away something profound from them, but I'm saying we make impossible something profound for ourselves, that potential of sharing in the joy of another's growth. So for example, we have the joy of those children experienced at the table when the boy finally got on his bib. I mean, like they were so excited and just, ugh. Versus merely the emotion of relief that the American woman felt. So she she lacked something that the children had. Now, this all might seem kind of, you know, too abstract or maybe just warm and fuzzy stuff, uh, but I don't think so. Montessori is not just about aiding children to gain independence in action. It's about our enjoying and celebrating that independence inside, too. So I'm talking about the spiritual element of, you know, watching the progress tremblingly, as Maria Montessori described those children at the table. Now, you know, just to be real here, of course, every day isn't going to be like that. You know, sometimes you just have to throw that bib on or tie a child's shoes for her or whatever. But the point is to try to be more aware of how we're feeling about the experience and hopefully getting to a place where we look on with joy at children's achievements. And that's no matter how seemingly small they may be and even if the metaphorical soup gets cold. So that's what I first wanted to highlight from Maria Montessori's story. Now briefly, I'll go into my second point. And I think it's that we need to also have this perspective of spiritual joy with our own growth as adults. So this is not just a perspective on children. At least it's not just in my opinion. So I would say take, for instance, um, say how much growth you parents and teachers out there have made over the last couple of months. You know, with all the turmoil that COVID-19 has brought with it. Uh, I'll give you an example of this from my own life. So I was talking with a good friend of mine who is a veteran Montessori teacher. And I mean, one of the best I have ever seen. But she is of the old school type and doesn't do much digitally. So I'd say maybe you go in her classroom and you want to stay forever. I mean, it's that good. Uh, But on the other tech end, I imagine if you, you know, sent her an email, you maybe you'd hear back from her in a month or something. Now, that's probably an exaggeration, but you get what I'm saying. She's amazing in the physical classroom, maybe needing some growth in the virtual one. Well, I was speaking with her a couple weeks ago, and she was sharing how challenging it has been with everything going you know, virtual. And she gave a few examples like, like video conferencing. So when we were talking, it became clear that she was learning a brand new and difficult skill in her context. And I would argue that her growth with this, it is in spirit, no different and no less important than that child learning to put on his bib. As she told me her story, I'm telling you seriously, I got kind of emotional. It's like, for me, there was something just really beautiful in her new growth. And this is as somebody in, you know, midlife. It's, it's, it was something really cool to experience and see. Um, Now, I can hear some young punk saying something out there like, oh, yeah, getting on a video call, please. You know, I I could do that in my sleep and something like that. And, you know, such a young man, he might not be wrong. He could do it easily, but he'd be missing the point. It's not only about the end goal, in this case, getting on a virtual chat. It's also about the journey. And in my view, this is just as important for us as adults as it is for the child. So... What I'm ultimately 
saying here is we need a perspective change on our own growth. You know, we who understand Montessori a bit would never say that the child who wound up with cold soup, he, he failed. You know, ironically enough, I bet that cold soup was the best tasting soup he'd ever had in his life. Um, but in the same way, maybe getting on your first video call ever, but doing it, you know, five minutes late or something, it isn't actually a bad thing. It's meaningful growth. And if you share your struggle with your peers, like if you tell them about the hour spent before trying to figure things out, maybe your, you know, quote, failure to sign in on exact time transforms into a call of celebration of your achievement. It's like similar to those children together at the table. So it's a change of viewpoint I'm talking about. Now, you know, there are most definitely differences between children and adults, of course, huge differences. But ultimately, for all of us, there is no end goal in life. Like life itself, the journey is what it is all about. And if we are growing as individuals, and I mean really growing, like pushing ourselves to improve, then that work itself should be celebrated in a very deep way. You know, even if on a few days here and there, the soup gets cold. All right, that is it for my talking on that wonderful story by Maria Montessori. Hopefully it didn't feel like me lecturing or something. Um, I just felt it was important to say and I wanted to share with all of you out there. So a few wrapping up notes before we go. One is because everyone's been stuck in the house lately, I just, I put together something special. Uh, at least special for me, and I've been getting some feedback from both children and parents, and they find it pretty special too. But I started a virtual read aloud of a children's version of the ancient and exciting adventure, The Iliad by Homer. So I'm reading it in a way that both young and old alike can enjoy, uh, I, though I'd say children should probably be at least age six. So if you want to join in or check it out, I'll be adding a link to the podcast episode page. And then on another note, for those of you who listen to this show regularly, I'm going to go back to my normal non-coronavirus podcast schedule. So a new episode every two weeks. This means the next one will be on Tuesday, May 19th, and then, you know, every two weeks after that. And then for everyone out there, if you enjoyed this episode or others, please thumb it up, share it, whatever you can do to spread the word. And of course, leave a review if you're feeling up to it, as I love, love hearing from listeners. Actually, let me me pull up an example review here to share. Okay, so this one's by Kim Retzpew, which she titled A Time for Reflection. Quote, Jesse, I'm truly grateful for this podcast. I've enjoyed the content immensely. Your podcast has given me the opportunity to pause and reflect every morning on my life's work as a Montessorian and my role in the lives of the children and my environment. Thank you for this. I am planning on sharing the podcast with parents. She's got a few exclamation points. Uh, End of quote. So, and then there's a longer one by Miriam2425, but I'll just read her heading. Uh, It's, quote, the only podcast I have on repeat. (laughs) Nice. So a big thank you to both uh, Miriam and Kim and to all the others out there who have written reviews too. Uh, Hugely appreciate it. I love reading them. And if you don't like sharing your thoughts publicly, feel free to write me. My email is jesse, J-E-S-S-E, at montessorieducation.com. Of course, you can send in questions, comments. uh, If you think something I said is wrong, or send it all in. Just, I don't want any hate mail, though. Send that to somebody else. And uh, that is it for today. So I'm looking forward to talking with you again in a couple weeks. And... In the meantime, you know, despite all the craziness out there right now, I hope you enjoy yourself uh, in this good life. Adios for now.